All right, we have this is the way I was running the car this last weekend. Um, I wanted to show some close-up shots because I a lot of it just was because of the weight I added to the car um, in certain places. Let's see if maybe we could kind of show that a little more. Uh, you know, the front of the car is, is pretty weight sensitive. Um, I've added weight, you know, right here, and actually I've taped, I ran out of lead, so I, if you can kind of see it here, I taped some quarters into the slot underneath this wing. Usually I'll, I'll, I'll super glue or shoe glue um, some weight right here, just regular lead chunks, but in this case, I ran out of lead, so I put two quarters in here and then taped them down. Um, but one thing I wanted to mention about that was, and there's also, for that matter, there's also a little lead right here. With the front end of this car, um, this is the most sensitive portion of the car. If you put the, you know, obviously the further forward you put the weight, the more um, sensitive it's going to be. And I find that in here you can usually fit between... Uh, half an you know a quarter of an ounce to half an ounce, and that's seven to fourteen grams. Um, that's about as much as you'd want to try to put up here because I think that the car stops centering up. Uh, doesn't it doesn't respond you know it doesn't want to center up after you try to get out of the corner. It wants to stay rolled over. You know it's you get in the corner, it kind of wants to just stay like this. Um, so that's about as much as I recommend putting there. You know, and obviously as you get, you know, closer to the center line of, of the, the axle on the, the axles on the car, the less, uh, per, you know, the less pronounced the effect of the weight is. Because I added weight here, and it wasn't, it didn't seem as sensitive as when I added weight here, obviously. Um, but it does, the main thing with this car is it's really long, and you kind of want to keep, you know, when the car's driving, it, it, it does, you know, one, one of these numbers where it wants to, like, raise up all the time, because there's nothing up here, you know, once you get past the servo, there's no weight, I mean, most of, most of the weight is concentrated, obviously, back more around here, so, you, you wind up with less weight up there, and a the car just wants to, you know, get up, to, gets the motorboat and getting the weight back all the time, which is okay in certain situations, but if you have any kind of um, if you want to have any kind of on-power steering, you kind of kind of keep the you need to keep the front end of the car down at least a little bit. Um, but I mean, as far as a standard thing, I usually have maybe quarter ounce here, and then um, back here, I usually have you know half an ounce, uh, fourteen grams. I always have something you know a little bit there, just a same thing, kind of you kind of centering. All this uh, weight in the car generally, that's just generally what you want to do is sort of center things up. Now, I do have right here, um, uh, excuse me, seven grams, you know, quarter ounce. And the same thing on the other side. Uh, oops, actually, I should say, same thing out here, seven grams. But then also another seven grams stuck to the side, you know, and the same thing. Uh, Right, right in here, another seven grams. So 14, 14 on the radio trays. Um, and then here, you can see a, there's a full ounce here. Um, and this is also the heavy post, the, the, new, the new heavy post that they sell. Um, and just to sort of let you know how this all works, this ounce here, and the ounce on the other side. So there's two ounces, you know, um, uh, 56 grams. I think this is this is pretty key for um, anything but the highest traction racing. You know, is to, to keep the weight here. You know, at all times. I mean, it'll be like a standard. This this here that I've I've added the the 14 grams here. I actually don't really think you need. I added it as to, to try to test things out and it, it seemed like it was making the car sort of waggle 
you know, you could you could almost feel it going through the corners going burp, 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 burp. And um, I'm not sure if that was, you know, I'm not running a damper disc or any kind of dampening um, side to side. And I don't know if that was because of that as much as, you know, it, or put it this way, I don't know if that would have been a feasible thing to run the damper disc and the weight. You know, if that would have been better or just to take the weight off and let the car run the way it was because it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad with... I, th I think this was just to the point of adding basically an extra ounce across the center of the car here um, was maybe just too, a little bit too much. Um, a little bit too much for the, you know, in, in general. Um, because the car has run very well without the damper disc back here. And, I, and maybe adding it, you know, would make the car even better. I don't know. I haven't had a chance to try it out. But the way the car is, this bit of lead is a bit too much. Um, the other thing too was, I know they were showing pictures on the internet of the new car, and back here, you know, right, right here, they're showing the new car. They're going to have some kind of like weight on a bearing so that it weighs this side of the pod without you know affecting acceleration. But I kind of just figured the easiest thing to do was to put some lead right here across the diffuser, you know, on this part of the car because. If you if you think about it, if you look at the car, um, you know that this is where the the vast majority of the weight is on this this motor. It's the magnets in the arm are right here, and then this is just you know the brushes, which is negligible compared to this. So if you look at the back of the car, there we go. If you look at the back of the car, you know the diffs over here. You got all this w weight concentrated here basically and then you know back here there's not not as much so you put a little lead back here uh, and I used to, and to be honest with you I used to run either you know a quarter or half or seven or fourteen grams on my F103 in this same back corner here on that car right on the T-plate on um, the sort of balance out the motor so you know it makes sense but it's cheaper than buying a new car or <laughs> all these new parts is you know throw you know a little bit of lead from a two dollar package of lead back there um, but in general I would I would say that the most the most important lead you can you can have on the car is is probably right back here this is you know this is the least um, it, it gives you the most benefit for the least upsetting of your car. You know, the, the more you, you add lead, you know, in the back here and all this stuff, or the more you add lead way up front here, the more sensitive it is. And, in fact, adding lead in this area is really track dependent and setup dependent. You know, if, if your car works, you know, has enough rear traction, you can start playing with this stuff. You know, adding you sort of adding lead to keep keep the car steering, keep the car, um, you know, keep the front end down. Um, but if you're just looking at when you want to start with your car, trying to hook it up, start adding lead. You know, always I would say always add it right here to begin with. You know, the the only bad thing about it is getting the battery in and out can be kind of a pain because you start stacking up lead, then it doesn't want to turn. It doesn't want to make that turn to come out of the car um, you know this this thing won't won't pivot out correctly but um, basically kind of get the antenna out of the way here basically you want or maybe we should just turn it this way how about that better yet basically you just want to have you know this lead back here um, and again the pivot plate um, for rubber tire racing, I totally recommend that. I think it's a, you know, it, it saves room and it also contributes to that, 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 you know, weight right where you want it, right here on this this plane of the car, you know, this this general area. Um, and but you know, in passing too, I I think that the split upper deck, and, I, and in combination with the FRP plate. On the car, I have the FRP lower plate here. Um, it seems I don't know if it's you can see it, but it's, it seems like it's letting the car, you know, twist. Let me kind of move things back here. Twist front to back a little bit. You can kind of see the car 
just twist in front to back even, even you know, without the T-bar. See if we can kind of show that. And I think that helps the car get a lot of forward bite because I, I hit a ton of forward bite this weekend. And I think just letting that thing kind of, you can see it almost sort of flex a little bit, just lifting the front and rear. I don't know. But, yeah, generally the car was a lot better with this, this upper deck, which I was sort of surprised because I wasn't too sure what was going to happen, if it was going to be much help or not. Because um, the F103 doesn't seem to like a split upper deck as much. But this car sure does. Um, so, that's it for lead. Basically, keep your lead in the middle to start. And then, you know, add lead to the front when your car picks up traction. And a little bit right here ain't going to hurt you either, so good luck.